New homeowners discover the skeleton of the former homeowner. Schoolboys in Japan are not having their first kiss when they should. And hackers demand France's electric company pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in ransom in baguettes. These are the weird news stories on Weird AF News, the weird news podcast that is recorded in a closet. The only weird news podcast daily in the universe. I'm here for you. Got some weird news for you. Owners of a new home make a terrible discovery. The dead body of the former owner of the home in the form of a skeleton. The new owners were renovating a home in eastern France and they made the shocking discovery of a human skeleton. And it is likely that of the former owner who vanished about 15 years ago, according to the prosecutors. Uh, Olivier is the prosecutor in the nearby town of Saragomez. I can't say this French word, man. It's really hard. Probably something like that. Here's a quote from Olivier. A corpse reduced to a skeleton was found on Saturday afternoon. The remains were found in a difficult to access spot under the roof whose entrance was nearly hidden. The new owners of the home were renovating the home after buying it following the death of the former owner's widow. While looking for the source of rainwater leaking into the roof structure, one of the owners entered a cubbyhole almost without realizing and found the skeletal remains inside. The body, they say, is very likely that of the former owner who disappeared in 2009 when he was age 81. Local police are investigating the cause of death and the remains have been sent to Strasbourg for forensic examination. That's how you say examination in French. Examination. Uh, now, I don't, I've never bought a home before, but don't they do a full home inspection prior to the sale? I mean, it would really suck if you found out that the home you just bought was lived in by a serial killer previously. You know, when you start popping up floorboards or uh, you, know, you dig a zucchini garden, you start finding bodies. That's not good. But maybe they don't. Maybe they do just like a somewhat thorough walk through of the home, some inspection prior to sale. Anyone familiar with this? I have no idea. It just seems to me like if you find a skeleton in the attic, somebody didn't do their job. I guess it's better than finding a skeleton in the closet, guys. I mean, we already have enough of those, right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Now, you're probably wondering, as I am, um, how this guy disappeared and why no one found him for so long. Turns out his disappearance had gone unresolved despite numerous intensive searches of the area. Intensive searches of uh, the area, just not the actual house, apparently. <laughs> did you look in the attic, bro? Dude, I totally... I think I did. Did you look in the attic? Yeah, maybe I did. All right, probably no need to look in the attic, man. Oh, well. I mean, how do you not try and find the source of a particular smell? I mean, I'm thinking of the smell of a dead person. I mean... You know, have you ever had a mouse die behind the refrigerator? Just that smell, that tiny mouse is just debilitating. You can't live like that. Never mind a a, a grown man. Now, the prosecutor has an idea here. They They say the scene where the body was found hints at suicide because there was a rope that was found still hanging in the attic. Okay. <laughs> I mean... If you walk up into the attic, even if the body is hidden somewhere in some cubbyhole, if you see a rope dangling from the rafters in your attic while you're looking for your missing father, husband, etc., wouldn't you be like, okay, let's do a more thorough search of the house. (laughs) There's a rope up there. Wow, this just... This reeks of foul play. No, I don't know if it reeks of foul play. It just, you know, it certainly reeks of stupidity, that's for sure. Although maybe the widow, you know, didn't have a sense of smell. Maybe maybe the widow didn't have a sense of smell. Maybe she could, couldn't get up the stairs into the attic. But she would think, like, she's got family helping her. I mean, I don't know. If, if, if my husband went missing, it would be, like, all hands on deck. That's the end of the article. It doesn't say how the new homeowners are going to deal with the fallout of this. Uh, because uh, you have to assume now that the ha- house is very haunted with the dead dude. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to keep living in that haunted-ass house. Uh, so, I guess it remains to be seen how they'll deal with it. I was trying to think of what it, what are the 
some of the worst things to find in your new home. And then I thought, no, let's keep this positive, guys. Let's keep it positive on Weird AF News right now. We need positivity. So I came up with a list of the top five things that you want to find in your new home. I came up with this. Number five, a secret door. Isn't that sweet? Wouldn't you like to find a secret door in your home? That is so cool when you discover a secret door, especially if you're a kid. Oh, man, I would use that secret door all the time. Number four, in your yard, marijuana plants are growing. Ah, how cool. Marijuana plants. You have a marijuana garden. That'd be lovely to find. Number three, a sex dungeon. (laughs) That'd be pretty sweet to find that somebody spent some money and time building a sex dungeon. But now you can enjoy it with your new with your new family. Uh, number number two, uh, pizza oven, like a real pizza oven, like a wood burning pizza oven in your house. That'd be dope to find one of those. And number one, the number one thing you want to find in your new home is, in my opinion, gold bars in the walls. Yes, just gold bars in the walls. You know, you want one of these uh, doomsday persons that previously lived in your home, some paranoid individual that doesn't trust the banks, and they put the gold bars in the walls in case shit goes down, as you know it probably is, is about to. And then you get to reap the benefits of all those gold bars that you just found in the walls. You know, build yourself a Mayan temple in your backyard with the gold. Whatever you want to do, put them in your teeth. I mean, amazing, amazing. Or sell the gold and buy, buy NVIDIA stocks or something. I mean, you could do a lot with gold bars. <laughs> The number of high school boys in Japan who have had their first kiss falls to 1970s levels. Just one in five of the boys at a senior high school in Japan have had their first kiss, according to this study by the Japanese Association for Sex Education. This is the lowest figure since the organization conducted its first survey of sexual behavior and kissing among students in 1974. Well, it seems they're very concerned that these high school boys aren't having their first kiss. Very odd. Uh, This is a very strange and invasive statistic to track, in my opinion. (laughs) I mean, there's a committee out there that's doing this. Some committee is like, you know, we need this important data. What data, sir? Or what data, ma'am? The data on the economy? The data on uh, global warming, perhaps? The uh, pollution of the nearby oceans? No, no. We need the data on these high school boys and when, when they're having their first kiss and if they're having their first kiss or not. Very important. <laughs> okay. It says here in their latest poll, which covers the 2023 academic year, they found that girls in this age group were similarly cautious with 27.5% saying they had experienced their first kiss compared with 22% among the boys, which is down 13 plus percent points and 11 percent points since 2017. The proportion of senior high school students aged 15 to 18 who had kissed for the first time has been declining since its 2005 peak when one in two said that they had locked lips. Uh, Again, this is very strange. Although, I mean, in Japan, maybe not so. They're very concerned about the fact that uh, they're not making babies over there. The government's like, the government is like, guys, get busy making babies. Come on, guys, get Get busy making babies. And all the all the high schoolers are like, yeah, but how do you even kiss? How do you even kiss? Do they even have sex education in, at schools in Japan? Oh, can you imagine how hilarious that would be? I assume they don't, given these statistics, but maybe they do, but it's probably lame. You could just imagine some, like, really uncomfortable old Japanese gym teacher, like, uh, this is a penis. This a vagina. And, uh, this, uh, oh boy, uh, oh boy, the, uh, hmm, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. For the purposes of this article, they introduced Tamaki Kawasaki, who's a columnist and a sociology lecturer who said the survey's findings suggested that young Japanese were uniformly disengaging from sex post-pandemic. Um, Tamaki says, quote, it shows that the trend is for people to move away from real physical sexual activity, even at a time when it's natural for them to be sexually active. Instead, there's a stronger tendency for them to stay home and watch sexual content alone. If teens who represent the country's future continue like this, then it is difficult to see any improvement in this declining birth rate. Yeah, I mean, well, you can blame it on the pandemic and kids staying at home. But I mean, there's a bigger picture here in 
I think culturally in Japan, I mean, they just force these kids to work too hard. The tests and the, the homework and the, you know, they're just a lot on their plate, man. You know, studies are like so important over there. And everything is riding upon you studying and just, you know, kicking ass on your tests. You have very little free time for, to be social, I'd imagine. And then that, that little free time you have, you're probably on your smartphone. So they're just not getting together with, with other humans in general is what I think is going on. And it's not just young people. That's happening all across the board. The whole smartphone activity, dating apps. There was a time when you actually went out and socialized. You met people in person. These days are over now. It seems to me, anyways. I had the experience of uh, living with a 20-year-old Japanese. Uh, I, call, I call him a boy. And uh, we lived together for a year in downtown L.A. It was a little over a year, actually. And first of all, he's just an amazing individual. Just, I just enjoyed him. I miss him. And I did visit him when I was in Tokyo back in 2020. But... Uh, he had a very strange interaction with with women. Um, you know, I would try to introduce him to some, you know, because he didn't know anybody, you know. And I took him out socially, took him to some parties and, uh, you know, taught him how to throw a football. That was a pretty cool moment. Um, anyways, I just noticed he, you know, his interaction was was not, was just, it was just very shy. They're very shy, it seems, uh, young Japanese boys. And I don't, I don't know what that's from, but I got the impression that he ha- he really lacked uh, sociability and social skills. It could have just been because he's in a different country as well. So I can't make a definitive judgment on that. But very shy in general, and especially around girls, I noticed. And now, prior to smartphones, I just want to add this one thing. Um, my social activities with girls when I was in high school was uh, was quite electric. I mean, we would, we, I mean. Anybody remember the days of playing Spin the Bottle or Truth or Dare or Five Minutes in the Closet? Anybody ever play Five Minutes in the Closet? This is some things we used to do. Not proud of it. But we have a little get-together, a little party, and you would end up uh, maybe sometimes spinning a bottle, and now you're kissing. Or maybe you're in a closet, and you're, 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 you're touching. You're kissing and touching. Or maybe you've got a Truth or Dare going on, and, you know, now, and, and the dare falls right into your lap. You know, that's and, and now you're now you're kissing or having a baby with someone. <laughs> I dare you to have a baby with her. <phone rings> Hackers demand an electric company in France pay a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar ransom in the form of baguettes. The article begins by saying hungry hackers have demanded that France's Schneider Electric Company pay hundred and twenty five thousand dollar ransom in in baguettes. That's right, baguettes. And no matter how you slice it, that's a lot of dough, bro. Bleeping Computers report indicates that a hacker group may have stolen 40 gigabytes of data from a major French energy management and automation engineering group after successfully penetrating the system. These hackers are demanding uh, quite a bit of money worth of baguettes for some reason. Maybe they'll explain that. And if the ransom demands aren't fulfilled... The threat is that sensitive data, including information about company projects, staff, and user data, will be spilled. The hackers indicated that should Schneider publicly admit to this latest data breach, the ransom would be cut in half, though, which it sounds like they've admitted it. So uh, the ransom demanded has been decreased to $62,500 worth of baguettes. Uh, I got some questions here. I mean, how do they... Hackers expect to receive these baguettes without getting ID'd. I mean, this isn't like crypto, which is what they normally demand, because they can kind of receive that anonymously. Uh, Maybe these are unmarked baguettes. That could be a thing. And I I can't help but wonder if this is related to the the recent cheddar heist in the UK. They could. uh, Do you think they could be related? They could be. The people asking for all that cheese might be on to baguettes, and it just makes you wonder what's going to happen next. Are they going to demand some wine, a little Pinot Noir heist? Following that, some cigarettes, I'd imagine. I'll tell you right now, if you find somebody demanding 10 tons of butter, probably related to the baguette heist. I don't even know what... you got to get these baguettes quickly, man. This isn't the best negotiation for baguettes, because if you don't get the baguettes quickly, they get harder than a brick, man. Yeah, have you have you held in your hand a baguette that's like a week and a half old? 
Man, it's it's harder than cement. I mean, maybe they're going to use this for building supplies. Ah, this just doesn't make any sense to me. And I've seen Ocean's Eleven. You would think I would understand what's going on here. I could say this, though. Over in Europe, a life of crime has never looked so damn delicious. All the things that I used to say. All the words that got in the way. All the favorite TV shows are gone out the window. Is, is that, are those the lyrics? I'm not sure I got that right. Is that Sugar Ray? Who's that? I, that gives me a 90s, late 90s vibe. I want to say I'm feeling like, you know, ecstasy and Sugar Ray. <laughs> Anybody live that life? Uh, anyways, thanks for putting up with me, spending some time with the Weird AF News podcast. I appreciate it, all of you. There's a gazillion podcasts out there, but you're spending some time with your boy Jonesy, and that, you know that doesn't go unappreciative, unappreciated, I should say. Well, I also want to give appreciation to Kent. Kent bought me coffees off my website, weirdafnews.com, and he wrote, "Hey, it's Kent from Canada. Love my Canadians. I love them. Love, 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 love them." Kent says, "Kent from Canada, the place that I used to drink heavily and play pull tabs." at ended up folding the organization as it was mostly made up of old veterans. That didn't come out right. Let me try that again. The place that I used to drink heavily and play pull tabs ended up folding as the organization was mostly made up of old veterans. Anyway, they sold the property and distributed the shares to the members. So I got a little cut of the sale and wanted to share with you, Jonesy. I can't afford the tour of your closet. I can't get high with you as I'm allergic to THC. But if I strike it rich, I'll treat us both to copious amounts of nose candy instead. Nyah, 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 nyah. Good luck with your life, man. How great is that message? That's so funny. Hey, it's all good, Kent. Nose candy, whatever, man. Whatever, whatever. Let's just have a, you know, I'm not going to smoke crack. (laughs) Those of you in the Patreon, by the way, I posted an interview with a crackhead in there. This is the kind of stuff that's in the Patreon, by the (laughs) the way. Some weird videos I come across. I I had to watch this video. It was an interview with a crackhead from 1981. Very intelligent guy. Professional with an amazing high-paying job. And just could not stop smoking crack. And just the way he described crack, man, I, I don't think I need to ever touch that. And so I have a my word of advice here, disclaimer. Um, do, we, do I even need to put a disclaimer? But like, don't try crack. If you learn anything from this episode today, do not try crack. And if you watch that video, you will you will by all means avoid it. Avoid it like the plague, as they say. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, some other stuff I like, I, I enjoy, but I'm not going to do that. You know, it's learning. It's about learning, guys, and uh, supporting each other <laughs> in this in this difficult world. It's hard to deal with the world, so I can understand trying crazy drugs and, you know, spending a, a lot of time uh, tipping the bottle. I mean, I understand. I understand. I enjoy these things in moderation. I do. It's hard. It's a hard life, man. It's it's hard. Reality's tough to deal with, man. And, and, and you know, I cover this, all these stories on this podcast. It's so crazy. It just seems to be getting crazier and crazier. You just got to, you guys got to stay the course, guys. It's going to be, you know, here's what you do. You, 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 you create your own little community and you got people you love in your orbit. And by the way, you don't need any more than that. You just need a little community of people that you love and trust and that love and trust you and support you. Even if you're trying to do something crazy, like record a podcast inside a closet or do stand up comedy. You know, I, I, I grew up in this stupid, small, uh, white trash adjacent town outside of Boston and then I moved to New York City then I moved to LA and now I've been all over the world doing uh, stand-up comedy I mean my life I'm blessed I'm blessed but I had support and little communities friends and family and comedians that supported me along the way and and so I, I have that and that's all you need just a little bit of community you need a little bit of something to help you get through and then that way you don't become a crackhead I mean see life lessons here on weird AF news right very helpful Anyways, if you want to buy me coffees like the amazing Kent from Canada, uh, go to weirdafnews.com and you can do that. You can even join the Patreon there. Just click on the Patreon banner and then you get to uh, you, you get to be on this receiving end of of really funny, quirky, strange videos like an interview with a crackhead from 1981. I mean, where else are you going to get that stuff, guys? It's your boy Jonesy. If you want to email me because tomorrow's Florida Friday, you know what you know the deal. If you don't know the deal, well on Friday, I only do weird news from Florida. So if you come across weird news from Florida, email me, funnyjones at gmail.com, or you can send them in my Instagram DMs at funnyjones. Keep going, guys. Keep going. The universe really, really loves you. Believe me. <laughs>